Hello and a warm welcome to the Refreshing Views Observatory and our first episode of What's in the Sky for December 2021. And it looks like we've got a busy month for December. We've got a chance to observe a bright comet. There's a parade of planets in the evening sky and we've got one of the best meteor showers of the year. And plus, of course, two weeks after a lunar eclipse, we then have a solar eclipse and that's followed by the winter solstice. Now, if I've inadvertently missed anything in this presentation, then do let me know. Feel free to put anything in the comments below and do let us know what you're up to as you observe and image the night sky. So just as it's getting dark, if you look towards the southwest, you'll be able to see a parade of planets. We've got Venus and Jupiter, two very bright planets. And in the middle, we've got the slightly dimmer but beautiful planet Saturn. And these planets are joined by the crescent moon on the nights of the 6th, 7th, 8th and 9th of December. So a beautiful opportunity to photograph that sunset scene. As it starts to get dark then you'll see that the autumn's constellations, we've got Pegasus and Andromeda, they're all now starting to set. While at dusk we've got the winter constellations of Orion, Taurus, Gemini, they're all starting to rise now at sunset. So that's the time to photograph your autumn objects before they get too low and we say goodbye to them. And if you're planning an all-nighter you can watch the Milky Way and Cygnus set in the evening sky and then rise again at dawn. So the dwarf planet Ceres is putting on a fine show. It's transited through the Hyades. I've had great fun sketching out with my binoculars and it's now transiting through Taurus just below the Pleiades. Well worth checking out with binoculars or with a camera. Other planets said Mercury is practically unobservable this month. It's best up for those under the warm southern skies. Mars is on the far side of the sun so we won't see that until next autumn, autumn 2022, as it prepares for its next opposition. And I can't wait to see this Mars opposition. Mars is going to be much higher up in the sky and of course at this time next year Jupiter will be back higher in the sky and I don't have to dodge the trees to finally catch the king of the planets from the observatory. So moving into the outer solar system we've got our two tiny dots, Uranus and Neptune, well worth checking out with binoculars and tracking them from night to night. And if you've got a camera or if you've got a big telescope, put the magnification up, see if you can pull out those faint moons right at the edge of the solar system. Later in December, we've got my favorite meteor shower of the year. This is the Gemini's meteor. They peak in the night of the 13th and 14th of December, around about 120 uh, zenithly hour rate ZHR. We probably won't see that many for the simple reason that there's a bright moon on the peak this month. So it's worth waiting until later into the night, wait for the moon to start setting and for Gemini to be rising higher in the sky. It's always worth checking out the Gemini's amazing meteor shower, lots of bright meteors, so fingers crossed we have clear skies. So after the lunar eclipse of the 19th of November, two weeks later we have the new moon and this is a solar eclipse. Uh, unfortunately this one's going to be quite a challenge to visit because it's actually the eclipse passes over Antarctica, so I'm not too sure there's many people in the world who are going to see this one. Now I'm really excited about the opportunity to observe Comet Leonard. This is the most promising comet we've got for the, for the season. It was discovered on January 3rd of this year by G.J. Leonard at the Mount Lemmon Observatory at a pretty dim 19th magnitude and it's slowly approaching the sun, slowly approaching the earth as it gets brighter and brighter. And it's passing through Coma Berenices and telescopic observers are now picking it up. Its closest approach to earth is on the 12th of December with perihelion following on January the 3rd. And it's predicted that this comet, and I always get nervous when we have comet predictions, it's predicted that this comet will certainly be within binocular visibility and should probably be naked eye visible, ideally from a dark side. So we'll keep our fingers crossed, but I always remain skeptical. I've lost count of how many bright comets we've been told will be a stunning comet. Interestingly, on the night of the 2nd to 3rd of December, it'll track past the globular cluster M3, so well worth checking that out. Now it's best to observe Comet Leonard in dark skies before dawn, but it's a kind of a race as the comet gets brighter as the month goes on, it's actually getting lower and lower into the sky. So when you've got clear skies, when the moon's not around, it's definitely worth checking out. And as always, let us know how you get on. So as the winter skies start to take over, we've got a solar eclipse in Antarctica. At the beginning of the month, we've got a parade of planets in the evening sky, joined by that crescent moon at the beginning of the month. We've got a bright comet visible in small scopes and hopefully in binoculars and maybe the naked eye. And the 13th and the 14th sees the peak of the Geminid meteor shower. Full moon is then on the 19th of December 
and we have winter solstice when the sun's lowest in the sky from the northern hemisphere on the 21st of December. So I wish you all clear skies and as always don't forget to subscribe and I look forward to bringing you more videos as we explore the night sky.